Hi, welcome to a Physionic Detailed Study Analysis. Uh, if you're here, you're probably interested in the effects that artificial sweeteners have on insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity. Uh, so a number of weeks ago, I asked my physionic community for input on different topics that I could start investigating, uh, starting to look at studies for those investigations. And then I had uh, people vote on the top three or four that uh, everybody was interested in. And one of those was artificial sweeteners and their impact on insulin sensitivity. So that's what we're going to start doing from now on. So here in this video, that's exactly what we're going to go into. Uh, if you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Nicholas Verhoeven. I'm a PhD candidate in molecular medicine, and I read studies essentially for a living. Uh, so I analyze studies, go into statistics, go into the data itself, and then eventually come out with some sort of physiological explanation for what's going on inside of our body if we do certain things like consume sucralose in this situation. So if that's what you're here to find out about, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. So as usual, so I'm going to give you an overview of the topics that we're uh, going to be covering in this video. So obviously going over what is sucralose, if you're not familiar, just a brief overview on sucralose. Then I'm going to go over the main question that we're trying to answer. So does sucralose actually lead to insulin resistance? And then we're going to go for anybody that's part of my Physionic Insiders. Uh, you guys will also get access to the full version, the unabridged version of this uh, detailed study analysis, which will also cover how sucralose affects uh, on the pancreas as well as the mechanism of action, uh, looking at a particular protein that comes out of our gut that's based from sucralose, which is uh, I found quite interesting. So I'm going to cover all that. If you want the full version of this detailed analysis, you can hop on over and subscribe to the uh, Physionic Insiders. Uh, I'll have a ticker for that um, and some links if you're interested. But if you're interested in just these two, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the answer that we'll be getting comes from this particular study, which is a super simple study. There isn't a whole lot to it, uh, which makes it really easy to understand. And so I, I'd like to begin first off by obviously giving us a bit of a background on sucralose. So sucralose is most commonly found in Splenda, but it's found in uh, many, many different products. So clearly the interest there is quite high because uh, if you're going to be constantly exposed to something, you'd probably want to know if it has some sort of negative health effect on your body. And since insulin sensitivity means that you have, uh, it essentially determines if you're going to have diabetes or not, that's going to be an extremely important facet, right? Uh, so if you're more insulin resistant or less insulin sensitive, those are two two sides of the same coin, then you're going to be more prone to becoming diabetic. So how does Splenda, how does sucralose specifically affect this process? So to get into a bit more on sucralose, sucralose is a uh, chemically modified chemical or molecule that is modified from the generic sucrose. So let me remove myself real quick. So sucrose is this molecule right here, sucralose is over here, and sucrose is made up of, it's a, what's known as a disaccharide. So it's two different monosaccharides, meaning that there's two different single molecules that make up, when they're combined together, they make up sucrose. So one of them is fructose, which is right here, and then you've got glucose, which is right here, so, and then they're uh, connected right here at this bond to make sucrose. Now, if we look at the chemical structure of sucralose, it's actually quite similar. Uh, we have our fructose, which is not quite fructose as we have it here. And we have our glucose, which is again, not quite glucose as we have it here. In that the chemical structure has been altered to the point where you end up removing some of these hydroxyl groups. So you end up removing uh, the hydroxyl group groups and adding chlorine groups. So these chlorine groups, these chlorine atoms are added to this molecule to change it to the now known as sucralose. 
So this is uh, chemical engineering, essentially. This is changing the chemical structure of a molecule to, uh, in this situation, the benefit of sucralose is that it's many, many times sweeter than sucrose, and therefore we can use much less sucralose, meaning that the caloric content is drastically, drastically reduced compared to sucrose, which is just sugar uh, as we're, we're used to it. So to give a bit of a background on the study design, they had 15 participants, so it's not a huge study by any means. Uh, they had 15 participants and most of them were women. Now, but however, all of them were healthy and young, so in their early 30s, if you consider that young, and they're all normal weight and their nutrition was otherwise maintained as they went throughout this study. So there was a sucralose condition and a placebo condition, and the sucralose condition was given capsules to consume that contained 200 milligrams of sucralose. So that's about equivalent to about three diet sodas worth of sucralose. So certainly manageable, something that a lot of people would be exposed to. Uh, so this isn't some astronomical amount of sucralose that they're adding. Uh, to these people's diets. So, and then the experiments were done after four weeks of consuming either sucralose or consuming placebo, and then they made comparisons uh, after that. So here we've got our sucralose condition. So this is after four weeks of sucralose and after four weeks of placebo. So we've got that in uh, all of the data points that we're gonna be looking at. Here we're looking at plasma glucose, so blood sugar levels. And here we're looking at blood insulin levels. And what they're doing here is they're doing an oral glucose tolerance test. And this is what I've got displayed here. So we've got a woman here and she end up, ends up taking a set amount of sugar. So she ends up drinking a certain amount of sugar that's been controlled for. And then they end up measuring what happens in the bloodstream to insulin and what happens to glucose. And what we're looking for is divergence. So we're looking for differences between the placebo, which did not experience sucralose, versus obviously the group that was consuming sucralose for four weeks continuously. So again, 200 milligrams uh, every day. And what we find is that their plasma glucose level, so if we measure this over two hours time period, that you know, obviously glucose levels or sugar levels are going to increase in the bloodstream. Why wouldn't they? Because this person just consumed sugar. So why wouldn't it end up in the bloodstream? That's exactly where it would end up. So we see that there's an increase in blood sugar concentration, which then plateaus out as that maximally enters the bloodstream and then starts to reduce. So now, of course, as a reaction, we have an increase in insulin and that tends to increase as well and stay stable as this blood sugar is reduced. And if this were to continue, eventually it would go about back down to baseline. So if we look at blood sugar levels, we see that there's no difference. So the two lines are basically superimposed on top of one another. So there's no difference in blood sugar levels. The sucralose, the consumption of sucralose for four weeks had no effect on the overall blood sugar tolerance that these people experience. However, when we start looking at insulin levels, we do see that there's a slight change. So the placebo uh, looks like it has lower insulin levels at the 90 minute mark, 120 minute mark, meaning that insulin levels might be coming back down to normal or baseline down here uh, sooner than we see it for the sucralose. And Unfortunately, I don't feel like this, the research has really displayed this very well because when I was reading this uh, research, I found it just rather confusing because, again, if you've been following Physionic for a while, you know that uh, we can't just look at this stuff and then just say, oh, yeah, there's a difference. Uh, we have to actually apply statistics to these situations, and they did not make the statistical analysis uh, very clear when they were explaining some of the data here. So, but it seems like there might be a, a, a difference here. So really what we need to look at though is the overall insulin secretion and the overall plasma glucose levels. And that leads us to this data right here. So this is again, still the oral glu glucose tolerance test, but here they're doing a, a variety of measures for specifically insulin sensitivity. So they're taking insulin 
and creating a relationship to blood sugar levels. So if you have lower insulin and normal blood sugar levels, that means that you're more insulin sensitive. If you require more insulin to control the same blood sugar levels, because we saw that blood sugar levels were the same, then that means you are more insulin resistant or less insulin sensitive. Again, that's uh, two sides of the same coin. So they've got a series of different indexes here, a few, few different measurements that they've done. Uh, the Matsuda index is a, an index of insulin sensitivity. So is this HOMA percent S, which is again, a measure of insulin sensitivity. Again, both of those, the higher they are, the better uh, in terms of better insulin sensitivity. And then HOMA IR is in insulin resistance. So typically the lower that is, the better because you want reduced insulin resistance. You do not want to be resistant to insulin. <clears throat> okay, so what do we find? Here we've got our su sucralose group looking down here. We've got our placebo group looking down here. And we see the Masu Matsuda index indicates that there is greater insulin sensitivity with the placebo group. So those that did not consume sucralose. Now, if we confirm that with another measure, so the HOMA uh, sensitivity here index, we find that again, the same exact is true. So that the placebo group, the non-sucralose consuming group saw, or I shouldn't say that they saw an increase in insulin sensitivity, really it's relative to sucralose. So sucralose is the one that reduced insulin sensitivity compared to placebo. And then HOMA IR, which of course probably, I mean, it's almost uh, obvious that if you're gonna see these changes in insulin sensitivity, again, if it's part of the same coin, you're gonna see changes in resistance. And of course, with sucralose, there was a higher index of insulin resistance compared to the placebo group. So what does that mean for us here? Well, what it means is that sucralose does seem to reduce insulin sensitivity based off of this study, meaning that it also increases insulin resistance. When consumed consistently at moderate doses, so about 200 milligrams. Um, you could argue if that's moderate doses or not, but the point is that if you consume it every day, a little bit, a good, you know, a, a few, Diet Coke's worth or a few uh, cans of soda's worth of sucralose, or if you actually add it to your foods, uh, then you will see a an effect on your insulin sensitivity. And keep in mind, this is not in people that are diabetic. It's not in people that are obese. It's in freestanding, perfectly normal weight, otherwise healthy individuals they see this uh, worsening of their insulin sensitivity. And as I said, if you're interested in the full analysis, you can hop on it over to the Physionic Insiders and you'll get uh, access to these two other questions as well answered. And that'll be uh, answered along with all the other study analyses that I have provided for all of my Physionic Insiders. That library of videos just continues to grow. So if you'd like to have take advantage of all that as long, along with seminars and office hours and a bunch of other stuff, then uh, I would strongly recommend that you join the Physionic Insiders. But if not, I hope that this answered your question for you, and I'll hope to speak with you in the near future. Have a good one.